This is the end of the transition period for drones in EU. What does that mean for you after January 1st, 2024? Let's find out. Since the new EU drone rules were introduced back in 2020, the plan was that they should be gradually rolled out over a period of time and then come into full force on a specific date. This date is January 1st, 2024. And from this date onward, it's no longer allowed in the European Union to sell drones without a class identification label, also known as a CMARC. To ease the transition, there's been a period of time, also known as the transition period, where you could fly your drone without a CMARC with respect to the weight in certain airspaces in the open category. The open category is the main reference for the majority of leisure drone and low risk commercial activities. The transition period applies to all drones that are sold up to January 1st, 2024. And these drones are categorized under the term legacy drones. During the transition period, you are allowed to fly drones up to 500 grams in urban areas without any safety zones as long as you did not fly over crowds. However, this will change from January 1st, 2024, where the transition period officially ends. This means if you own a legacy drone above 250 grams, you should pay close attention where you are allowed to fly. Let's start by understanding the airspace classification in the open category that's divided into three subcategories. A1, A2, A3. Common to all subcategories is that you need to maintain a flight height below 120 meters from ground level. Apart from that, each subcategory comes with its own set of requirements. A1, no flight expected or uninvolved people. If it happens, you should try to minimize it. No flight or assembly of people. A2, you are not allowed to fly over uninvolved people. You need to maintain a horizontal distance of 30 meters to uninvolved people also known as a safety zone. This can be reduced to five meters if a low speed function is activated. Airspace A3. You are not allowed to overfly uninvolved people. You should at all times maintain a horizontal distance of 150 meters to uninvolved people and urban areas. Starting from January 1st, 2024, it's actually quite simple to determine where your legacy drone is allowed to fly, as they are categorized uh, based on their weight either above or below 250 grams. If your legacy drone weighs below 250 grams, like the popular Mini 2 or maybe even the Mini 3 Pro, you can continue to fly in the A1 airspace, making the impact of the new drone rules very minimal. Heavier drones, like uh, the Air 2S, the Mavic 2 series, and even the DJI Avata will need to be flown in the A3 airspace, which unfortunately means you need to maintain 150 meter horizontal distance to uninvolved people and urban areas. You can imagine this has a major impact on how you can actually use these drones. So pay extra attention if you plan to go out and buy a second hand UAV as this might be something that you would be running into. If you intend to purchase a drone with a class identification label, please ensure that the drone displays the class identification label on its body. Several versions of the drone might be available with or without the class identification mark. Starting from January 1st, 2024, operations in the open category must be conducted with drones that falls into the following categories. Bearing a C0 to C4 class identification label, being privately built, for personal use, without a class identification label, but only if they are placed into the market before 21st of December, 2023. Drones already sold with a class identification label cannot be declassified after January 1st, 2024. Remember, a class identification label is actually your warranty that the drone complies with the current legal requirements. And in some cases, it actually makes it easier to operate your drone in the open category and even with heavier drones compared to the ones without a label under the transition period. So in many cases, I actually see this as a step forward that will make our hobby a lot easier. The different class identifications are linked to the safety of the drone and the potential damage that it can cause. Determining where you can fly and the level of education that you need to perform a safe flight in the A1 and A2 airspace. All drones up to 25 kilos can be flown in the A3 airspace. C0 is meant for the lighter drones up to 250 grams in the A1 airspace. No education is required to fly, but you do need to be the age of 16. You need to register yourself as a drone operator in case the drone has a camera. 
So there's really no way around it if you're flying a DJI drone. C1 labeled drones can also fly in the A1 airspace, but because of its weight up to 900 grams, an A1 A3 drone license as well as a minimum age of 16 is required. I would recommend obtaining an A1 A3 drone license. It only takes a few hours of studying and in most countries it's actually very affordable. And it allows you to legally fly C1 drones in EU like the Mavic 3 Classic or the Air 3 in urban areas. You would also gain valuable information that will allow you to conduct your drone operation safely. If you ask me, it's definitely worth the effort. C2 drones are reserved for the A2 airspace because the weight is above 900 grams and below 4 kilos. The potential damage to people and equipment is higher. So of course, the education requirements are more stringent. You need a remote pilot certificate of competency for the A2 subcategory and you must be 16 years or older. To be able to conduct an operation in the A2 airspace with a C2 classified drone. In many countries, this certification cannot be obtained online. And you need a physical exam on an approved drone school on top of your A1, A3 drone license. So this makes it slightly more complicated than just going for the A1, A3 license. That is, by the way, required even to get the remote pilot certificate. C2 drones include models like the Mavic 3 Pro, the Enterprise Edition, as well as the M30 and the M30T. Let's be honest, the price tag of these drones cater more towards the professional segment than uh, the hobbyist. So it's actually fair that they require a bit more use uh, to be put into use. So this table provides an overview of the DJI consumer, prosumer drones and the categories that they fall into. Let me know if you have any additional questions about this topic, then list them in the comments below. I hope you liked this video. If you did, then feel free to give it a like. If you didn't like it, feel free to press the dislike button twice. Thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you around.